On August 19, 1967, Robert Bartle, 23 years old, he and a friend Lee Warner, they had gone to Jurian Bay, which is in Western Australia. The pair were going to go out and do some spear fishing. They were going to leave the beach, so they swam out from the beach. And about 11 o'clock in the morning, they ended up getting themselves about 800 yards from shore in 25 feet deep water. Visibility was somewhat murky, so probably about 10 feet visibility is what I'm thinking. And Bob Bartle has to swim down and collect his fish float. So Bob Bartle dives down to get his fish float and Lee Warner continues on swimming and right then a shark goes swimming very fast underneath Lee Warner so fast he didn't get a good look at it. He looks over to see the shark and he sees that his friend Robert Bartle is in the shark's mouth. His torso is out one side of the shark's mouth and his legs and swim fins are sticking out the other side of the shark's mouth and the shark is shaking him violently. Lee Warner grabs his spear gun and he dives down to the shark and he shoots the shark in the head successfully hitting it in the head with one of his spears. Now the shark goes ahead and turns towards Lee Warner bites down on Bob Bartle and bites him in half, which leaves his legs and flippers sticking out the one side of the shark's mouth still, but Bob Bartle's torso floats to the surface. Now the shark is doing tight circling on Lee Warner, and Lee Warner has an empty spear gun in his hand, and he uses that gun and he tries to jam the shark in the eye as the shark is making these close passes. He hits right behind the eye and he says the white membrane came up as soon as he had done that. Now when the shark was circling, he noticed that Bob Bartle's spear gun was still close by, so he was able to grab Bob's gun. And now the shark came in close again. He took aim at the shark's eye, but shot right over the shark, missed the shark completely. Now both these both these spears have a line from them going to the gun and Bob Bartles went over the top of the shark. The other one is sticking out, out the head of the shark and there's also the float line still dangling in the water and these tangle up in the spear that is in the front of the shark. Lee Warner notices this and he swims back out of the pool of blood and he's just watching to see what the shark's actions are. He said the shark didn't seem that it was feeding, it wasn't even actually moving, and there was nothing he could actually do for Bob Bartle at this point, so he just swam himself back to shore. He went to go get help, he found three, three cray fishermen, and their boat brought him back out. He said it was 90 to 100 minutes later that they showed back up. The shark was only about 200 yards south of where the attack had taken place, still tangled up in, in the float and in both the spear gun lines. And they pull alongside, Lee Warner grabs his spear gun, he cuts the line to it and quickly runs to the, to the railing. He's gonna reload and shoot the shark again. But when he clipped that line, it must have loosened the shark up. The shark was untangled and disappeared. They were able to recover Bob Bartle's torso, no report on recovering the legs. It's possible that the only thing that kept the shark from continuing feeding was being under duress first by the close proximity of Lee Warner in the water and then from being tangled up in the float lines and the spear gun lines. Uh, this is a terrible attack. It goes down as a fatality, an attempt to consume. The shark was said to be very large and Lee Warner said that the opening, the width of its jaws was at least two and a half feet. That this would go down as an attack and an attempt to predate by a great white, we're not sure what size.